Hey guys, welcome to our studio. I'm Stuart. I'm Brian. This is how we turned a shed into a professional recording studio. So this project took us maybe like a month of actually working, but it was probably about half a year of planning and uh, sourcing the materials. So the shed was ordered from a company through Home Depot, and then they sent a company out to assemble it here. This is the story of how we turned that just bare bones shed, nothing but wood into a studio. We had a 16 by 12 foot shed assembled in the backyard, just like between the garage and like the play set. It's pretty sick. Basically exposed studs and plywood floors and a plywood loft that was pretty interesting that covered half of the space. And the ceiling had like sealed plywood basically under like metal roofing, barn roof form. So it's kind of like a weird shape, but it's, it's lit because we have a lot of space with the loft. Yeah. Okay. And then the next step with that is we had to get electricity in here. So, um, a electrician came out and put 20 amp, um, circuits, one on each side of the shed. And then we got a ton of insulation. Shout out Home Depot. So we got two inch foam board insulation from Home Depot, uh, very inflated prices, but it is what it is. We cut that to fit and then we, uh, use adhesive to attach it and sometimes nails on the top where the adhesive didn't work, especially on the ceiling. And then we use spray foam around the foam board panels to make a complete seal. And then kind of after that, the next step was we kind of wanted to figure out what we wanted to do for our walls. We decided on fabric walls because of the acoustic properties. So we got fabric track and stapled it to the studs and square patterns. And then we came back with fabric cut to size and tucked it into the track. We installed interlocking rubber flooring from Lowe's and cut the edges to fit. We had the outside of the shed stained, nice darker brown kind of color, but we got that same stain and stained all the places that we figured would be visible after we finished the walls inside the actual studio itself. In the corner that was gonna become the recording booth, we put acoustic batting underneath where the fabric walls were going. And then we got an AC unit. Um, from Amazon and we put that into one of the windows using um, some spray foam also and had a little stand for it in the back to support it. And then we put the same fabric that we um, had put into the fabric track on the walls on the ceiling and we kind of fastened it using these little pins that we got from Amazon. Then we painted the barn doors black and then we put acoustic foam on top of it. So we went to a local reclaim store and actually got a ton of stuff from there, but we got a door um, to kind of put into the booth and we framed the studs of the booth and also installed um, the door into that. We had to cut the top off the door, but I mean, it wasn't too bad. Once the booth was framed, we put two inch foam board on the inside of the studs. And we came back later and put asphalt board on the outside. We cut out a hole and put a plexiglass window in the asphalt board side of the recording booth wall. And then we framed it in with some more insulation and put acoustic foam over that. So once we finished all of that, we looked at the ceiling kind of underneath the loft and we were planning on doing this for a while. It just took us a while to get to it, but we bought this um, discount fabric from the store for um, a decent deal. And we were able to kind of pin that to the ceiling of the loft and use those same studs to match the ceiling and the rest of the studio. Then we cut some leftover black fabric from the walls and tacked it to the ceiling in the recording booth. We put two inch acoustic foam inside the recording booth and on the door to eliminate any sort of reverb sounds and also treat it acoustically and make it good for recording. Then we wired and hung our chandelier from a hook in the ceiling and then managed the cable into the loft where we plugged it into a smart plug. Another great find from the reclaim store. The chandelier was free. Yeah. 
We built and painted a shelf that attaches underneath the desk we have to wire laptops to. And we have an adapter that runs through one USB-C connection to power our displays and any IO for our computer. We got curtain hangers from Lowe's and got curtains from Walmart that looked pretty nice. They were um, red blackout curtains and we liked kind of the look of it and the vibe that they gave off. We got a good deal on the TV stand and also a nice TV on it. Uh, it's fun to watch thing on. Also, there is a couch that you can sit on that is across from the TV. We got um, some futon mattresses for the loft. We got this nice ladder for the loft that uses a telescoping uh, design from Walmart. After that, it was looking pretty good, but still a few rough edges at that point. So we decided to kind of um, go in and cable manage a lot of things under the desk and in the walls, kind of taking out, cutting little slits for wires and retucking the fabric into the walls. We got some more color changing LEDs for the curtains and for behind the TV. We got new rugs for the booth and common space with a tapestry feel. We built and installed acoustic panels from the right and left reflections of the speakers to acoustically treat the, the studio. Used some of the leftover um, acoustic foam that we had from the booth to kind of make those. We built and designed these adjustable speaker stands out of basic lumber and then painted them black to match everything. From that same Reclaim store, we were actually able to find a uh, window that fit pretty perfectly into the booth um, from the inside of the studio to kind of seal it off even more. Uh, we kind of cut that out, put it in there, and then acoustically sealed it. We put a mini fridge in the loft. All right, audio equipment. We've got Samson Resolve SEs. There's some five inch nice little monitors. It's big enough for our space. It's really small. So they're plenty enough speaker, very nice low end response. We have a 12 inch MK audio sub. We've got an 18 I8 Focusrite Scarlet. We got two P220 AKG microphones. We use all Audio Technica headphones. So everyone hears the same uh, frequency response while we're here, um, mainly M50Xs or M40s. We have an MPK249 from Akai as our MIDI controller. We have an additional uh, control key set with uh, play and pause and extra controls for FL Studio and our display link uh, adapter and a 27 inch monitor here. You can actually see the monitor pretty well from inside the booth if you're at the correct angle. Makes for a very easy workflow. Thank you guys for checking out our studio build. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stick around on the channel. Make sure to subscribe and go check out our Instagram. We got a bunch more content over there. Yeah, um, comment any ideas you guys have on anything that we did or any builds you want to see more in-depth videos on. And if you guys need work like production, mixing, mastering, hit us up on our Instagram. Our DMs are always open. Always.